joining us to discuss the latest exploration developments on one of the largest high-grade undeveloped precious metal assets in the world is Sean Kunkun of Dolly Varden Silver. Mr. Kunkun, thank you for joining us today, sir. Thank you for, uh, for having me, Maurice. And I, I've just got to say, uh, we are one of the largest undeveloped precious metals assets in Western Canada. Um, but you know, I think you're you're maybe you're foreshadowing what's to come. <laughs> Sounds good, sir. <laughs> well, thank you for the correction. Now, before we begin, Mr. Kun Kun, please introduce us to Dolly Varden Silver, which is number one in terms of size, meets, grade, and share the exciting opportunity the company presents to shareholders. Well, you know what? I think Dolly Varden is really unique and special in that there is a very, very, very short list of silver companies. Um, you know, most of the world's silver is produced as a byproduct. So when we look for pure silver opportunities, Dolly Varden is one of just a handful of, of companies that give investors exposure to silver. Um, I think what makes Dolly very special, though, is our project is located in a safe mining jurisdiction in Canada. Uh, we're in the northwest corner of British Columbia in a famous area known as the Golden Triangle. It's known as the Golden Triangle. However, 800 million ounces of silver have been produced. So it's one of the most storied and recognized highest grade silver and, and large scale silver mining uh, camps in the world. Um, so Dolly has a project. It spans about 160 square kilometers. Another way to express it is um, we've got a 15 kilometer trend. And along that 15 kilometer trend, what we've estimated is we've estimated a total of about 140 million ounces of silver uh, in all categories. And so half the deposit is silver, the other half is gold. And um, you know we're owned by some very astute shareholders. So 90% of our company is held by just a handful of precious metals, uh, in institutional shareholders, uh, Eric Sprott, Heckler Mining. So we've got a very, very special um, foundation in terms of our shareholders. We've got a healthy treasury. We've got about seven and a half million dollars in the bank. Uh, we've got all this exposure to silver and gold at, at grade. And recently, Maurice, we've started to have a tremendous amount of exploration success. The discoveries we're making in this mining camp that's been around for a hundred years is just mind blowing. And we, you know, today we had some really big discovery news, um, but you know, high level, that's what Dolly looks like, uh, you know, from a, a bird's eye view. Now, speaking of the Golden Triangle, let's go there and visit the flagship Kitsault Valley project where your team just completed 37,000 meters of drilling on 108 holes, which, as you just referenced, have produced some spectacular results to date. Now, before we get into today's press release, can you please provide us with an overview of what the goals were for the drill program and what they seem to indicate? Okay, great question. Um, so very, very high level. Um, one of the there's three different goals. Um, goal number one, de-risk. So what that means is we made a very transformational acquisition of Homestake. So, you know, we brought in uh, just under a million ounces of gold and about 20 million ounces of silver just to the north of the property, um, amalgamating, consolidating two big land positions and opening up a lot of prospectivity between the two deposits. So on the de-risking goal, we wanted to validate, confirm and extend the home stake deposit. Uh, that was goal number one. Um, in addition to de-risking, we wanted growth. So we wanted to look at the seven deposits that make up the, the total consolidated Kitsall Valley project, and we wanted to grow them. We wanted to step out, extend, expand known deposits. The last goal was to discover. And so there's parts of the property that have never seen any drilling. There's parts of the property that are wide open for discovery where we could fit in new deposits. And so we wanted to, to de-risk, to expand and grow, and to discover. Those are the three objectives. Now, we've released about half the drill holes so far. And what we've, some of the highlights that we've seen is focusing on the Silver Rich Valley. We have, um, started at the big Torbert mine. So Torbert's a deposit that produced about 20 million ounces of silver, and there's about 35 million ounces that are still left intact. Um, we had a big hole at a Torbert that we announced in August where we hit um, 50 meters 
of 414 grams silver. So if we think about that, sorry, yeah, that's, go ahead. No, that's spectacular. <laughs> that's exactly what you want to hear there. Well, what's interesting about that hole, Maurice, is the average grade of the deposit is about 300 grams per ton. And what we did is we stepped out 25 meters from one of the highest grade areas of the property and to hit 414 grams silver, that's not a silver equivalent, that's silver, over 50 meters is, you know, there's no words for it. So that was, you know, I, I didn't think we would outdo that news release because I thought, oh, you know, we just came out of the gate so strong here in, in August, um, you know, um, and then September 13th, uh, I was down in Beaver Creek um, at a, a very, very important mining conference and we released a drill hole 1.4 kilometers away at an area that we refer to as Wolf, the Wolf Deposit, and about 150 meters away from the Wolf Deposit, 1.4 kilometers away from Torbrit, we hit 20 meters of 584 grams of silver. That's just remarkable. You can ask for more. And within that, there is this meter and a half um, running 4,300 grams per ton. I haven't seen numbers like that. Um, and, and, and what's interesting is there was a gold kick. There was a one gram gold kick. And if you look at where the, where Wolf is, we have what's known as the Western gold belt that's coming down from Homestake. And we got that gold kick coming in, which is really exciting and some really high elevated, um, lead zinc numbers as well. Now, it, about a week or so ago, we put out some results, more Torbert Kitzel results. They were very, very encouraging, very, very strong numbers, approximately 12 meters of over 400 grams of silver. So just good meat and potatoes numbers, um, really strong you know, indications that the deposit is open, not only down dip, but also up, up dip. Um, but today's numbers, I'm gonna go out and say today's numbers are the most significant numbers in my opinion to ever come out of this project because we've tripled the strike length at wolf this is a 207 meter down plunge hit and it's also a, um it's a 400 meter extension um a depth extension but it's 750 meters away from from the wolf deposit so what what i'm basically saying is if you and there's some great images on our website um and and great uh you know there's a great long section that really depicts how we've started with wolf and we've just you know we've tripled the strike length but the numbers were strong, really strong numbers. Again, like 10 meters of over 550 grams of silver. Uh, within that, there was um, 1, uh, 1,049 grams per ton over 3.6 meters. So high level here is we are ambitiously stepping out and we're hitting. And we're, you know, we're hitting down plunge, we're hitting at depth. And these are big, ambitious step outs. Now, are the wolf and the torpid deposits potentially amenable to underground bulk mining methods? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, I personally believe there is a relationship between what I would refer to it as is the torpid horizon. And I think that, you know, my next focus is going to be trying to fill in that one and a half kilometers that is in between the two deposits but we're, we're doing a great job extending these deposits in a big way um you know the other thing that we have coming is we've got another 50 drill holes and those 50 drill holes you know we haven't released any results from homestake and so we we've shown you a lot of silver up to date but I think we're going to, you know, the knockout punch is going to come where we put out a lot of these gold numbers. And then we have a ton more on the silver side. We'll be, we'll be putting out results for, for, for months to come. So in terms of news flow, you're expecting this before the end of the first quarter results? Um, we will have more results um, before, the uh, before the first quarter, and then we'll continue to put out results into Q1. Okay, into Q1. Switching gears, let's look at some numbers. Mr. Kunkun, please provide us with the capital structure for Dolly Barden Silver. So we have 230 million shares issued and outstanding. Uh, as I said, there's about 90% of that is held by just a, a few large parties. Um, and so that's, uh, that's the number in terms of uh, issued and outstanding. 
In closing, sir, what keeps up at night that we don't know about? Um, you know, I actually, I've been sleeping pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you have. <laughs> I would too. <laughs> well, I am actually, I'm a shareholder, proud, very proud shareholder for the record. You know, look, we've outperformed our peers this year by 35%. We're adding, we're getting high grades. We've got something unique and special. So I guess the, the thing that keeps me up is maximizing this opportunity for the shareholders in that there's no doubt that I've got a winner here, a winner that will be merged up with a larger entity and my shareholders are going to make a lot of money um, and the communities that surround the project are going to be enriched by the development of this project in the future. Um, the question for me is, um, you know, when? Does it happen at the right time where silver's breaking out, we're outlining, you know, and we have used our drill bit to maximize the opportunity in terms of the discovery potential of the project so um you know i would love you know i would love for this company's uh you know story to end in a situation where you know right now we're trading at like 70 cents per silver ounce in the ground in a bull market that could be four or five times the value of that and i just want to make sure that we've identified all the low-hanging fruit before that happens well, last question for you, sir. What did I forget to ask? You know, Maurice, I just think that if you look at how do you get exposure to silver, there was a, a news release that came out a week or so ago by Pan American Silver, you know, and which was a go-to silver company. And, you know, they've got so much gold now. They, you know, they're they're part of the uh, Ignico Eagle, um, Yamana, yeah, uh, you know, transaction. And I just think if you're a silver investor, you know, one of your big go-to silver names just what came out of the silver world and is more of a gold company now. So, you know, that that list is getting smaller and smaller every day. And then if you factor in some of the geopolitical uncertainty in a lot of the world, specifically the silver rich uh, South and Central America, um, what you know, where does that leave Dolly Varden? Um, you know, forget $3 an ounce in the ground. This will be trading at five in a bull market because of the location. Well, Mr. Kun Kun, it's been a pleasure speaking with you today. Wishing you and Dolly Varden Silver the absolute best, sir. Thank you very much, Maurice. Have a wonderful day. The information presented on Proven and Probable is provided for educational and informational purposes only, without any express or implied warranty of any kind, including warranties of accuracy, completeness, or fitness for any particular purpose. The information is not intended to be and does not constitute financial, investment, or trading advice, or any other advice. You should not make any financial, investment, or trading decision based on any of the information presented without first undertaking independent due diligence and consultation with a professional broker or competent financial advisor.